Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna break down Shopify stock now. And what's cool about this stock is like not only is it like quintuple or quadruple or whatever. Uh, but more importantly, there's some really important lessons here to learn. I, a concept I like to call sacrificing early profits. And what's cool is when you kind of sacrifice early profits, especially with overarching long-term investments, what happens is you have a maybe uh, a stumbling performance or maybe a little bit more of a tough time at the beginning. But you get past this beginning stage, which is like the infancy of your portfolio, and as soon as you're done with that, all of a sudden, you have this really, really, really high amount of, um, or I like to call it geometric growth, because it absolutely it crushes sort of average returns when you invest in positions that have this potential. Now, um, for me, like when I heard about Shopify, it was actually like not directly through financial markets. It was more in terms of looking at like business assets. And you know, for me, um, I learned a whole lot about sort of getting into business assets and money on like companies um, from seeing like tons and tons and tons and tons of people that make like a bunch of like just crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of income and uh, cash flow. Um, like drop shipping crap from China through Shopify or selling their goods uh, through Shopify or you're making their stores through Shopify or whatever uh, they're selling because Shopify would does as well. It lets people come, you know, they can sit down and then they can make like an online store and then all you have to do is like run Facebook ads to the store and then, you know, you sell your stuff and you make money. Um, and it works really, really, really well. Um, obviously, it's not as effective as stuff like funnels or you know, upsells and you know, OTOs and stuff, and it's not like super deep level. But for a lot of people that are just starting out, uh, it has a lot of upside for them and it makes them a lot of money because basically what it does is it lets them jump through all the coding crap and just get right into having a page that says, hey, this is the thing I'm selling. Um, if you want to buy it, um, click here to buy it and give me money. And that leads them to, you know, all they do is run ads of that. I mean, that's like an entire business. Um, it's pretty basic. You just go to Facebook, right? You target people that like dogs, and then you sell them a dog trinket, um, and and then they, they give you money. And like a lot of people do this through Shopify, uh, which is super super cool. And so sort of at a basic level, like I came in knowing that like people are using this company and using this platform um, to just make a bunch of money, which is pretty cool. And so here's uh, kind of a really big takeaway from this actual company. Like they're valuable because they empower others to make money. Um, they empower the clients to go and build these stores that can sell a bunch of stuff and make a bunch of money. They empower the developers that work on some of the plugins to actually have like a plugin store so they can go and they can sell their plugins and they can kind of build this ecosystem of people where they have a lot of individuals all coming together for the sole purpose of running like Shopify stores, right? And that's kind of the world that they're in, that's what they're doing, and that's their purpose, is to sort of empower have like these online businesses uh, where they sell stuff. And so that's kind of how I heard of Shopify and learned about the company. And so for me, like, I didn't need to read an annual report. Like, I know that, like, they have subscription revenue and they take in money, and then, you know, hopefully they get to keep that money. Um, and historically, they've had green quarters where they've, like, kept had positive earnings. And they also had like down earnings, of course, where they had like not positive earnings. Um, and so kind of different different mentalities going into it. But for me, like I saw this as a good play because, you know, online uh, business, you, you combine those two together and you've got a pretty solid potential company. Um, and these guys have really grown like, like wildfire. I mean, they're like literally a billion dollar company. Uh, company goes public. And uh, I bought them right here at, uh, I guess, 120.58. Uh, and like the week after, two weeks after I buy them, they have this gigantic red candle and they go down like 25%. Um, and there's this massive red volume bar. For those of you who don't know, like if you have a chart, right? You got like your stock price on this chart and you've got sort of your volume underneath that. Actually you have like a little, you know, moderate amount of volume. If you have a really, really big red volume bar, that is gold. This is like insanely good. This is like the ultimate buy. Um, it, it's just really, 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 really good. Like if you can buy like right when there's a giant red volume bar, in most situations, especially if it's on a weekly graph or it's on a monthly chart, um, it's like getting in like right here, right before the big ups. It's like the money is it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal time to invest uh, when you do have that big red volume bar.
uh, it, it just works. It just works so, 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 so well. Um, unfortunately, I didn't buy, I bought before the big red volume bar, just based off of a long-term perspective. Um, and basically, the short term kind of sucked because I lost the, like, you know, 25% of the short term. But here's the, the subtle difference. This is something, you know, I first heard this when I was starting investing. And I was like, dude, are you serious? You're gonna tell me that? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And then I had this position, and then I realized, like, whoa. It only, I only realized it, like, after the fact, after it kind of went back up. I realized that, like, have a loss, but it's not an actual loss, and the stock goes back up, you don't have a loss anymore. Now you have a gain. And I just thought it was stupid. I was like, what are you talking about? My account says minus 10% or 20% on this position. Um, and since then, this has been like a really, really amazing position. It's, it's been a huge job performer. But at the time, it was a big loser. And it was a big loser fast. And I was sort of sad about it. And I said, look, I got two options, okay? The first option is you have most people. The first option is to react. Kind of like when you get kicked with a hammer and you like nerd your knee. So get out, not win, and, and lose, and just get out of the position. Because I lost money, and oh my gosh, I am so risk averse. I can't lose money. I can't ever handle hell, any losses at all. That's your first option. I wasn't worried about it because I didn't have any like immediate. That's why it's really important that when you invest, you kind of have this boss. Boss is isolated from your daily activities, isolated from the money you need to fill up your gas tank. It's isolated from you know, the schoolwork that you do or uh, the food that you buy at the grocery store. You want to have this box that's isolated from all of that. Have a portfolio position that goes down in the short term and all of a sudden you have to get groceries and you don't have any money. I remember this happened to uh, my friend's mom. Like, she bought stocks and then she ran out of money and she had to like sell her stocks at a 40% loss to go get food. And then like a month later they had doubled. It was insane. I felt so bad for her because like, all it was, was what? It was a difficult challenge with capital illiquidity. And if you have any kind of capital illiquidity, all of a sudden, it totally crushes your portfolio. It totally crushes your return. I remember uh, a while back, we sort of getting into like the cryptocurrency space, and I remember this dude, and he was like, I am a guy I'm from China, I'm from NVIDIA, and I will sell you a bunch of NVIDIA graphics cards for super cheap. And the like wholesale prices, and I'm like, whoa, no way. Because at the time, the like, cryptocurrency markets were going up really, really, really high. And so I was like, that sounds so cool. I would love, love, love it uh, to buy a bunch of these and you can you know, import them into America and then sell them for like twice as much on US markets and make a ton of money. And I'm like, that sounds awesome. I would love, love, love to do it. And so I sent this guy a bunch of money and to pay him, what I did, I didn't have free cash flow, I didn't have uh, outside money. And so I took some of my investment, transferred them, turned them into cash, sent them over to this dude. And I'm like, okay, I sent you the money, dude, let's see these graphics cards. And so he, he sends out like a fake shipping pallet, a fake shipping company, total scam by the way. Um, after about a week and a half, he's like, dude, it got stuck in China, I need you to send me more money. So I take more of this money I have in my investments, and I have to sell that sell those investments to pay this guy because he says it's stuck in China. And I'm like, dude, I need this stuff so I can go and sell it and make like 40 grand. And he's like, you gotta pay me the money. And I'm like, ah, fine. So I sell all the investments, this guy's money. And then he's like, okay, cool, got through Mexico, sounds cool. Um, now it's stuck in Texas. And then I'm like, what do you mean it's stuck in Texas? I sold everything I had in my portfolio to give this to you, and then, and then you kind of realize it's a scam. And those investments at the time were like maybe a couple grand. Within like four or maybe five weeks of that happening, those investments were worth six figures. So for me, like that loss was not a couple grand, that loss was six figures. Um, and that came from me not having enough liquid capital to be able to support my investments that I had going on at the time and simultaneously do this other thing that needed money. And so if you don't have like cash that you are strictly dedicating towards investments, you can miss out on a lot of growth because of a temporary setback. My plan was the plan that everybody has. I'm gonna get the stuff, and then I'm gonna sell it, and then I'm gonna buy back the stocks, or I'm gonna buy back the currencies, or whatever. Um, like if you don't get the stuff immediately, and sell it immediately, and you miss out on a couple weeks of growth, all of a sudden it takes six figures to buy back the positions, and you miss out on all the gains. For me, that was crushing, it was devastating. And the reason it happened was because I didn't understand this concept of having cash set aside specifically for investing. And so at the time I had, I had every, a lot of stuff. 
um, in different investments. I didn't have anything outside of equities. So because of that, I was a little bit more condensed to my portfolio management at the time. Um, so basically, I had this position and it went down a bunch and I decided, look, I'm not gonna freak out. I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, if it goes down to like 70 bucks or something, like yeah, I might have to sell. But you know, I'm gonna give it a month or so to kind of see if it recovers. And I saw this really big red volume part, which I knew was really great. And I wasn't really gonna buy any more of this stock, but I, I mean, I knew that's a good thing. So uh, I get in normal position size, and then you just sit, and 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 you, just sit. And, uh, you know, it goes from 120 to 500. Uh, I really think this chart shows, yeah, 5, 520. I mean, it's it's done really, really well. It's just been like this compound growth curve, almost straight up, um, which is pretty cool. Almost had a head and shoulders head up right here, uh, but but it didn't. So that's, <laughs> I mean, I don't like it didn't. Um, thankfully, I wasn't like looking to short it because I was long in the position. Now, like this looks really great. This is like honestly a really phenomenal position. It is really like based on fundamentals. Like if you look at the chart. Like, you can look at like MACDs all day, or you can look at stochastics all day, uh, but really, this, this is the fundamental. And that's why this is like one of the few stocks where like, I think it would be better to kind of open up with um, the actual like balance sheet, just because you can see sort of more information than I think the chart shows. And you can see like their revenues have been growing. I mean, a billion bucks last year uh, in revenue, but like they've been like operating on a net loss. It's just growing, growing, growing. Um, so like I don't really know, you know, if they make money or not. So that's the thing that I'm kind of skeptical about right now. But like looking back at this, like they never were really making like any actual money. And so like I didn't think this was gonna be in a phenomenal position. I think this was gonna be like my, well, that wasn't like my best position, but like I didn't think this was gonna be a position that would go up 500% or 400% or whatever. Uh, but it was, and the reason it was. It honestly comes a little bit down to like, I don't know, dumb luck, you know? You get 15 stocks, 20 stocks in a portfolio, you're gonna have a couple of them that just soar in a bull market for reasons announced to you. And for me, like I knew Shopify made a bunch of money, I knew they were super cool, but I didn't know that they could like quintuple off of negative earnings. And everyone liked how much revenue they were making, so, I mean, you look at the chart and they just went up and up and up and up and up and up. And uh, so that's kind of the subtle difference. Sometimes you make investments where you're not 100 percent sure on the result. You're not 100 percent sure on the earnings. You know, you look at the cash flow and you're like, I don't know, man. These guys are losing like a lot of money. Might not be sustainable for the long term. But look, you know what? If, if the stock is gonna like do this, then like I don't really care. Like I'll take the money. You know, it's it's like why not? Um, and so that's the big thing. Like sometimes you might make an investment. And at the beginning, that investment might go down a bunch, but in the long term, it could actually be one of your, your really, really, really high performing investments. Um, now, the second thing I want to talk about is equally important um, because, like, recently what I've been doing and what's been working like absolutely phenomenally well is I've been trading like on Friday, um, like day of expiration calls. So basically, it's really simple, right? You've got your options chain and you have sort of all the expiration dates. And there's like the one that's this Friday, and then there's next Friday, and then there's the next month, and then there's the next month, and then the next month. What I've been doing is really cool. Like on the Friday of expiration, like right here, what I'll do is, is you just pull up the daily chart, and like usually I, I wouldn't day trade a stock that's over like 25 bucks just because it's not worth it. You're usually not gonna have enough movement to justify that trade, and it usually just doesn't work out. What's been really interesting with Shopify though, is you basically you, on the Friday of expiration, like Friday morning, um, but you can do it on any other day of the week. Uh, the only thing is it's a little bit less profitable on other days of the week. And the only real reason for that is it's pretty basic, right? If you look at like Friday uh, options um, for puts and, and for calls, basically what you're looking at is, you know, you got your strike price in the middle where it is actually expiring and then your you know, money level. And what happens is like the value of the calls over here and the value of the puts over here that are kind of in the money, um, they're based off of the actual price value. So they have like an inherent value, but everything else is just based off of time value and speculation. So the objective here is pretty basic. You want to get into a position where you can have a lot of growth by kind of buying at a level that's maybe initially 
out of the money, so you buy like right here, and then it becomes in the money, and then it becomes worth a lot. And that's kind of harder to do, just a little bit harder to do, it's not impossible. Uh, when there's like a lot of time value to the option, so if it's on Monday and expires on Friday, it's gonna be like probably four times more time value than uh, if it's the Friday of expiration, this is the last day the options are tradable. Um, and so what I've been doing lately, it's been working really, really well, is you just day trade these options on Friday, and you just day trade Shopify stock, and Shopify stock has been trading like on a one minute candle basis, very, very, very similarly to, uh, it's kind of staggering. Um, I w it's gonna take a little bit more time. Like, I would say you're probably gonna trade this until like two o'clock most of the time, um, and you're probably gonna start at about nine, uh, or 10, sorry, 10 o'clock. Uh, but even just this last Friday, like they had this really, really nice wedge, or this nice, um, yeah, symmetrical triangle. And then some news came up about them being like Facebook, Libra, partner, because like we talked about earlier, they take a bunch of money, or uh, they, the people spend a lot of money on Facebook ads to drive traffic and people to their websites to sell stuff on Shopify. So it makes sense for Shopify to take Facebook currency if that ever becomes a thing. Um, so anyway, there was this really huge wedge, and this news came out about the Facebook thing that pumped it up to this peak, and then it kind of, I, I can't see VLAP on here, let me add the VLAP real quick so you can see VLAP, because VLAP is, is vitally important for like all day trades ever. It's that one right there. And basically they, they come out of this upward wedge, and they break below the VLAP, and right here the price is at about 520, uh, 522, and so what you do is you buy puts at 520 or puts at 515, for about a three dollars, give or take. Um, I know these puts were three dollars. You buy puts for three dollars right here, and then you wait for them to kind of bottom out at about two o'clock. And then at two o'clock, they're at about five fifteen, and you pay you know three dollars for five twenty puts. And now they're worth six dollars, right? Because um, you can you can kind of play the five dollar inherent value, and then the dollar uh, per shoe of, of spread. And now what you've done is you've you essentially um, you know you turn two dollars into, or $3, into $6. Um, and this has been happening over and over and over again. And I know you can't see the VWAP bands on here, but basically this is like the bottom of the VWAP bands. I know because it's in this trade. Um, and so, like, this trade I've been doing like literally every single Friday for like the past four months. Um, I've just been day trading Shopify and it's been working phenomenally, but like every Friday, over and over and over again, this, uh, this pattern is just like, like you just use any kind of basic technical analysis and you just apply it to Shopify in a one minute candle chart for the Friday of expiration. Um, I don't know if it's because the market's really volatile right now or if Shopify's really high right now, but basically like I've been able to make consistently like hundreds of percent gains on Shopify. I have students that have literally done the exact same thing um, and literally made like five figures in the past couple months uh, alone um, using this one strategy of just like day trading Shopify Friday expiration. Uh, Shopify is a big one. I know I also have had students say they've been doing the same thing with Tesla, which has been going up massive. Um, it was Amazon, yeah, it was Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Um, a little bit pricier on the Amazon ones. The Shopify ones are nice because you can put in like a $400 position or something and turn that into about a grand. Then you put in a grand, turn it into two, turn it into two, then um, usually they, they use about a grand positions turning into about 10 grand positions and then you just kind of add zeros from that point forward. And it's really scalable because there's a lot of volume on these calls and puts just because it's, it's a really, really big stock. So there's a lot of volume on that stock. Uh, and so basically my point is like, this has been creating the exact same returns as I got over like two or three years in the span of like two or three hours. Uh, and so again, it just kind of shows you the power of active investing versus like long-term passive investing. I know that this entire class is a long-term passive investing, um, also swing trading, uh, but I just kind of wanted to kind of throw this in for you guys, show you guys how cool active trading is, where you can get literally the same returns that would take you years to get in like a couple of hours, which I think is pretty cool. Um, obviously a little more advanced, you have to have options um, to have these kind of results. Otherwise, you're trading a $500 stock and you're making $3, which is like nothing. Um, but when you leverage it with options, all of a sudden you have way more upside and it opens up a whole new game uh, of opportunities, which is pretty freaking cool. Uh, and, and honestly, it, it's just been working out really, 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 really well. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty sweet. So that's Shopify, uh, really, really phenomenal position. They have been totally crushing it. And if you want to actually get deeper into it, you can actively manage the positions and use the magic of Friday expiration options contract and uh, absolutely crush it. Actually, kind of funny. Um, this again speaks to like, you need to know what the hell you're doing as you get into this 
uh, game of trading day of expiration option contracts. Like you have to understand that if you're wrong on this, like you've got to sell quick, and if you don't, you'll lose upwards of like 25 to 30 percent of your investment very quickly. Um, and sometimes you lose all of your investment. I've lost all my investments on option trades, and it sucks. But you know that happens like five percent of the time, and the other percentage of the time, you like quadruple your money. Like it's it's totally worth it. Uh, but when you're starting out, like I wouldn't expect you to have those same numbers if you've never traded a stock before. Um, and I, I can't guarantee anything at all. But the point here is. Um, but you kind of want to know what you're doing and to be able to know what you're doing, it really just comes down to trading stocks 9 to noon and then you kind of have the exact same skill set you need to trade this kind of stuff, um, which is pretty exciting, pretty great and cool. And that all kind of comes once you get into, you know, options and, um, and you'll have access to that as a client, you get deeper and deeper into the implementation coaching program uh, in 9 to noon and it'll, it'll walk you through exactly how to do that so you can absolutely crush it, which is super, super, super exciting because uh, this stuff, this stuff is really fun um, and uh, it just freaking works. So with that said, thanks so, so, so much. Hope you get a ton of value out of this training. Go out there, apply it, absolutely crush it. And I will see you in the next module. Thank you. Bye.